So we're going to start first by describing the entire language. And then after that, we'll see if we have a minute or two left. Uh, it's going to be completely interactive, uh, as the other talks have been. Um, there are um, just a small number of operators. So we're, we're going to start with the easy ones. There's Symbolo. Yeah, hold on. Symbolo. We're starting Symbolo, with Symbolo. Absolutely. A little change of pace here. Okay. Which basically says, if I ever get a value, I will be a symbol. And then we have another one called. Hold on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We can't do it this way. No, you need to run. I know. Well, we haven't. You haven't introduced. Run. Well, pretend like I have <laughs> by showing it to them. This will get one value, and it will basically say, I don't know what I am, but I do know that I will be a symbol someday. So we can do the same thing for number O. You could sort of guess most of how that would work. And then we have uh, another little one called no O. We have no O? We do have no O. We OK. Don't. Go ahead. And it will take a symbol, like, say, a uh, closure. Whoa, it did that? It puts a five in there now? That's a nice touch. <laughs> oh, wow. No food. <laughs> so this sort of gives you an idea uh, that, that you can keep a particular symbol from ever entering a data structure of any flavor. Now, we do have little simple control operators. I hope some of you are familiar with them. Um, one is called fresh, which introduces um, fresh variables. And the last one is called um, cond, which allows you to have uh, lots of answers, as you'll see uh, very soon. We didn't introduce the most important operator in the language. No, we didn't. Do you want to? I think talk it's about time, yes. We also have unification, which allows us to give values to variables. In various ways. And we have disunification, which allows us to say um, two things will never be the same. Okay, do we have that in? Okay. Okay. Well, well, wait, wait, hold on, let me do the fresh. Okay. And there you are. So was it underscore zero? Did you say what an underscore zero means? Underscore says, I don't know what it, I am ever going to be. Just, it just hangs out there. OK, so that's it. Wait, what? Oh, no? Hold on a second. You got more? Yeah. I'm Have sorry. you done the condi yet? No. Oh, well, there you are. Hold on a second. OK. okay. All right. So Time you can unify time. x with 5, and now you get a 5 instead of an underscore zero. OK, let's do a condi real quick. Real quick. One quick condi just for the fun of it. Okay, so syntactically, cond looks like cond in scheme. All right, so let's do like that, I guess. Okay, so if you say run one, that'll say you'll get back at most one answer if it exists. And if you want, you can do a run two. Now, in this case, we have two answers. So in the first clause, uh, Q, which is our query variable, is associated with um, X and Y. And in the second case, it's associated with 5. And if we want to get all the answers for sure, we can do a run star. And this gives us back a set of answers. And there are no more answers. And it didn't go in an infinite loop, which is nice. So that's a proof that those are all the answers that are to be had, because our our search is complete and um, interleaving and all so, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a very, very simple program. And for some of you who have heard our talks, we used a pen. We're going to use something slightly different. We're going to use something called Rember from the little Lisper that simply removes the first symbol that matches in a list. Very, very straightforward. And 
Um, <coughs> can ask for a much simpler uh, recursive program. So Will is busy writing it there. If the list is empty, we'll return the empty list. If the car of the list is, um, is the thing we're looking for, we'll return the coder of the list. Uh, and the last case, we will simply um, write. <laughs> Can you write a book to, about this once? Uh, remember X. Uh, Kans Caravel. Kans Caravel. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. X could yeah. Okay. Okay, so that should work, we all believe. And then we run it, and let's find out. Perfect. And there we see that it removes it. So, simple enough. <coughs> now, <we've, laughs> now, we want more answers than that, so we're going to rewrite it in Mini Canron, and let's see what happens. So, the way that Mini Canron works is you're just not allowed to um, make nested calls. So, we're going to rewrite this entire thing without using any nested calls. So, here we go. Whoa, 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 hold on. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. Okay. First step. What's the first step? First step, rename it, okay? And somebody once asked me, um, what is that O in the end, right? That remember O? So I thought, well, maybe this is a good place as any to tell you. It is the top of a question mark. <laughs> it's just a piece of creativity. Okay, it's in, and question marks, indicate uh, predicates, and predicates and relations have a lot to do with each other, and we're talking about relational programming. Okay. So, yes. Second thing to do? Second thing, change the con to con D. No. No. Add an output. Add a, oh, add an output variable, of course. So every function which took n arguments will now become a relation that takes n plus one arguments. Very simple, very straightforward. Okay, now we'll change the con to con D. And we will change the null to equal, equal uh, um, the empty list to L. And well, now that we know we have the empty list, we have to give out some value. And if we look at the right-hand side of the definition of Rember, it will be the value that's associated that we want to associate with out. Okay. And of course, out philosophically is like sort of the wrong name because- Totally the, wrong. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as in and out variables in main camera. It's like, eh, they're just variables. But it comes from a function. So thinking about it as an out, at least for a very short time while you're writing it, is not a bad idea. And then you have to forget that you did it. OK, <laughs> now the next line is really simple. We introduced a couple fresh variables for our car and cutter, because we see we're going to use them. And now we say is, actually, you don't need the A. Let's get rid of that A. OK. I know where you're going with this. OK. okay. So now we're just going to uh, find out what, what uh, the list looks like. Well, it's got an X in it if, it if we're successful. And it has a D in it because uh, we might need it. And in fact, we do. So what we're going to do is simply um, associate without that D, and we've removed it. And that's all there is to it. D and A I use as cars and quitters, so um, it helps you to know that. OK, now we come to the last line, and the very first thing we do is we throw out else. Goodbye else. OK, now the next thing we have to do is we have to get our hands on the car and quitter, so we will do a fresh AD. And then we will just do the obvious here, which is, um, just do a call to Rembro on the cutter. Yeah, of course, that part. And then do a Rembro um, D res. We have to add an, uh, an inner recursion value. And finally, we will do the um, association of the original A with the, re the re result of the cutter, and we're done. Oh, no, all we basically did was move all the nestings. That's all we did. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, we do. Good call. Thank you. That okay. would be X, yes. Yes. And very good. Okay, so now um, 
we're done. We, we have implemented it, and we've shown you how to write a recursive program. The whole language is now at your fingertips. That's it. Okay. So all we have to do now is try it out. So we want to know if we get the same answer, and sure enough, we do. So every uh, program that ran that way before runs that way now, except that there's an extra set of parentheses because we are anticipating wanting more answers. So let's see what happens if we do want more answers. Good enough. And there they are. What? We said we were going to remove B from the list. And there it is again. It's not a very, it's not a very good system. <laughs> it has weaknesses. So, Will, what can you do about that? Well, I think when we remove that else, that could have been a problem. OK. So don't just throw away the else. OK. What else you got? Ah, now we use our disequality constraint. And lo and behold, okay. A, so A what will is, never be the same as X. Yeah, so what does else mean in our original program? Else means that the tests in the previous clauses all failed. So this is the idea of a Dijkstra guard, if you're familiar with that. In fact, we now have some technology called dematch, so you can write your scheme programs on the way to translating to mini Canron. Um, using Dijkstra guard form so that you can reorder your con clauses any way you want. And this is something you might want to have in uh, closure technology or some, some closure. Uh, it was a very simple macro. Yeah, a, I'm sure like David could do it. In Steal it, be my guest, you know. <laughs> but it's nice when you're translating from closure to core logic to, to make sure that your clauses can be reordered any way. And you have to make sure that you have tests that are making sure you don't end up on a clause when you shouldn't. Because in mini Canron, all of the con D clauses are tried independently. Okay, so just because um, the first line match doesn't mean the second one won't be tried also. So we have to make sure that the second and the third clauses here don't overlap. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Silly Emacs. Okay. You'd think by now it could read our minds. Really. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Okay. All right. And it could it? if we wrote it courage style. <laughs> okay, it would work. It would work. Okay, so now we only have the one answer. We don't have any bogus information floating around. Okay, so we can now move on to a totally. Did we want to sh try to push the rem row up, or do you want to? Nah, I nah, think okay. this is more than enough. Okay, okay, so at this stage, what we want to do? Oh, we didn't even show it running backwards though. Oh, we oh, must run it backwards. backwards. Yes, okay. of course. <laughs> Don't forget. Okay. All right, I'll actually like fix this program. It has a subtle bug in it. So yes. A bug that makes you take forever. So. When you run things backwards, you must use Wilbur's law, which is all recursions have to sink to the bottom of your code. Okay? So anytime you have a fresh with some recursions in it, move the recursions down. No harm, because the ordering doesn't really matter, except it does. <laughs> okay, what did you do? Did you run okay. it again? To Are run you it. ready? Mm -hmm. Ah, wait a minute, what is that? B, A, B, C, oh, that must have been what you started with in order to get A, B, C back. And then you have A, B, B, C? Yeah, that's actually right. And it works. Because okay. it's trying to put the Bs anywhere before. So maybe you should run it with, oh, you did run it with star. So those are all the answers. Yeah. I didn't mention that star means all the answers. Okay. So you have to be careful when you use it, because all the answers can easily be infinitely long. Shall we show we one? If you wish. Hmm. Don't forget. <laughs> Okay, 
So let's do, okay. There's so 10 those, answers. Those are 10 very abstract answers. We have sort of variables everywhere we can. And then we can get all the answers. And I'm gonna quit that before my computer goes bad. Okay. We're gonna make a little shift now and we're going to look at a scheme, not mini Cameron, but scheme interpreter. And it's gonna be a very quick look. All right, you get to see it? Almost, okay. But it's a vanilla scheme interpreter doing scheme. Okay, except there's uh, one little operator up there called fix because it's not the best thing to um, have self-application get generated later on when we worry about those such, such things. So there's nothing terribly, uh, hopefully, uh, confusing about this code. Oh, I have one over here, don't I? <laughs> and um, not going to explain it. You know, it's, 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 it's rampant and it's a standard definition, so we can move on. <laughs> well, do you want to run it or anything? Sure, run it. Okay, let's demonstrate that it does factorial or something like that, you know. You know that if it does factorial, it's a, it really does work. <laughs> so if you see the answer 120, that's a really good sign. That's like a mini Canon program you have to fill in the data. Okay, so we have the empty environment and the factorial five program. And there we are. 120, okay, okay. cool. Good, good. All right. So, um, obviously that's not the exciting part. What we want to do instead is, um, what are you going to do? No, no, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's do something simple in the regular in the, in the regular inferencer. So we're now going to show you the inferencer. And uh, for those of you who have seen the St. Louis talk, we had a little fun with an inferencer. And unfortunately, we had a little fun with it yesterday, too. <laughs> and this morning. <laughs> um, something seems to be uh, amiss here. So we're going to have to uh, forego uh, using the fix in here. Um, but Fear not, we have plenty of uh, interesting things to show you in any right. event. Well, to set it up correctly, mm -hmm. so Dan and I had this great idea for this cool new mini Canon technology we were gonna show off today. And uh, it we was still to are help. Gonna, we're gonna still show it, it off. We're still gonna show it to you. But it was a bug finding technology. And it worked so well that it found a bug in our inferencer that we were using <laughs> to help show the bug. Uh, so, yes, we actually use this to find the bug, but we haven't fixed the bug yet. Um, it, so. It's going to be very simple. In fact, if you want to leave it up on one screen, oh, you can't do that. Because if you leave it up on one screen, then you could have the benefits of the bugging on this side while we're showing the, <laughs> the rest of the, uh, the fuzzer technology. Um, oh, excuse me, sorry. All right, so what we want to do now is... Um, oh, well, do you want to show it running? Yeah, I wouldn't need like to show it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just, let's do some type inferencing. Just um, make sure you commented out the, the fix lines, <laughs> please. So of all things, our fix needs a fix. It's broken. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, what do you want to type check, Dan? Oh, I don't know. How about uh, lambda x, lambda y? Um, um, times x, y. Lambda x. Lambda y times x. Oh, you want, okay, you don't want an application? Okay. No, we don't need an application. Oh. And, and you want times the x, y? Yeah, times x, y, and I will do that in the, um, in the empty environment, which is, we're using the same order that we used in the interpreter, so it's expression and environment, but here, of course, we want to get back a type so let's give ourselves a type. Oh, you've already yep. produced the type, okay? Yep. So that's the type. It's a function that takes an integer and returns a function, and it also expects an integer and so on. But we could do something slightly better. Um, we could, um, oh yeah, do you want to go ahead, just make something up. Let's just take that type we generated. Yeah. And plop that in. Sure. Yeah. And. 
generate a program of that type. And there is the program. Now notice, by the way, there is a program there, but there's also some deals that had to get made to, to make this work. So we had to agree that um, certain things were going to be like symbols, certain things were uh, going to be numbers, certain things were not going to be the symbol lambda and stuff like that. Um, and um, from there we can produce one answer. But are there more programs, perhaps, that have that type? Let's find uh, out. Uh, okay. <laughs> what did we do? Put a star there, I was, putting, I was going to do like 10,000. Oh, well, 10,000 wouldn't. Oh, how, about how, thousand? how about 1,000, 1, 1, maybe? Uh, one Mississippi. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> OK, so um, here comes our 1,000 programs that have the type arrow. <laughs> no, no, it has like a couple errors in it, right? It has, it has like error in. Arrow in, or in arrow, in arrow in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so our type inferencer for the most part works. You don't have to worry about it anymore because we've taken fix out of it. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is um, use this list of correct programs and hand it to the interpreter that we wrote in the scheme. Okay. All right. So here's what we're here's the basic idea. If you write a type inferencer in MiniCanron, which uh, we've done many times, but also um, on one of the production languages I'm working on for research, a GPU programming language, uh, functional GPU programming language that we want to embed in Clojure eventually, um, we have a type inferencer written in constraint mini Cameron, which has mini Cameron with a bunch of constraints in it. The cool thing is if you write your type inferencer in a very pure style, then you can run backwards, right? Okay, so this expression here will generate 100 well-typed terms in your language, okay? So these, are, these have uh, correct grammatical structure and they type, check, okay. So once you have that, then you can use that as a fuzzer, right? So you can take your well-typed terms and you can run it through your system to try to find bugs, or if it turns out that your system is actually correct but your type inferencer is wrong, you'll find errors that way too, uh, which is what happened with us. But <laughs> can you do? Al although this works uh, well in theory, one of the problems is that Mini Canaran tends to be very lazy when trying to generate terms. So you say, "Hey, give me one program that's well typed," and I'll say, "Okay, uh, a number." A number is a well-typed program. Okay, well, that's fine, that's good. But, uh, and then you say, okay, give me a second one, and I'll say, uh, okay, hash t. Hash t is a good program that's well-typed, right? So, uh, it doesn't really exercise all the corner cases of your system, okay? So, we thought it'd be really cool if we could sort of amp up our fuzzer a little bit. So, last night, we decided to implement cond p. P stands for probability. <laughs> Even though we're not actually using probabilities, we just request that you give numbers. P stands for probably works. Probably <laughs> works. <laughs> Don't forget when you, when you uh, do this, you need to uh, remove the fixed line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, we want to show off the con P. First. Oh, okay. Let yeah, me yeah, leave yeah. it in. Go ahead, ahead, talk about it. Okay. So, um, con P is, a, you can see the whole piece of code right there. It's um, beautiful. It's not bad. I would. Uh, I have my things with syntax case. We won't get into that. Um, but it's easy to rewrite this without the syntax case. Um, and there's a little helper here called uh, prefix sum, which basically says uh, I've got a list of, uh, of values, and I will add them and keep track of w at, uh, where the accumulator that I'm adding them to goes, and you produce a list where the numbers just get bigger and bigger, and then it's finite, of course, so everything's fine, and it's a very small little program. I mean, we're talking really small, like the entire system is under 40 lines of code. That we, we probably should just call the code closure because that's where we are, and it'd be much easier to remember. But anyway, so all we've done is change cond e to have a number associated with it for each line of a cond e, and that's it. And now we can run this program, and presumably, since there's a big giant number where the two is, 
We should get back a lot of twos <laughs> and a very small number. God bless you. Um, Another day. Keep going. And, and, uh, and very few. A few. Um, what? But no. <laughs> I guess nothing happens. Just keep talking. <laughs> so, uh, Talk fast. so we're going to expect that there's a lot of twos in this thing. So let's see what happens. Wait a second. What on earth? Help the people in the back. There you go. Okay. Oh, you're enlarging it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. So, con p. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so now we can have this little example. So right. if we change these numbers to all ones, this means that you have the same probability of getting any of these answers back, one, two, or three, right? But if we want to make one of the answers more probable, then we can just kind of weight it. And if we want to put floating number, floating point numbers or, or whatever. You can put any numbers you want in there. Yeah. So. As long as it, they, they work with addition. <laughs> That's all. Okay, yeah, we so we can really skew it in one direction or another. So mm -hmm. um, I guess here we're not going to see too many threes. Yeah, okay. So uh, the cool thing for me about this program, the CONP, was we actually didn't have to change any mini Canron code at all. Like we just could add code. So if you want to add your own notion. This is um, what we were trying to tell everyone. Get the right definition of your language and then have it be flexible. You know, you guys have all learned how to use inflexible languages at one point in your life, but you're not doing that anymore, are you? So that's what we, you know, that's what needs to happen. We need to be able to have the ability to just write the 40 lines and call it a day. Okay. Okay. So, should we, should we show off the interpreter? Because we actually have a working interpreter. At this yes, point. I think we okay. can show off the so interpreter is, a little bit. Yeah, this is like a, kind of the idea with the fuzzer here. So we can. So what we wanted is good answers, right? So we're going to. Uh, do you have them? Do you have numbers on them? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so one problem when you're trying to generate interesting answers with Mini Canron and running an interpreter backwards, one of the classic problems is that it tries to generate these simple terms like hash t or whatever, and you don't get too many procedure applications because applications are the interesting types of terms in the lambda calculus. So we can weight uh, heavily applications. So I put a 20 here and a one for lambda terms, which are only values in this language, and then one for, for variables. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when we put all ones first. Yeah, it's not very pretty. Um, so if we... Just try to generate some programs here and uh, their values. So let's do like 10 of them, I guess. Okay, so you'll see, because this is probabilistic, we can get the same answer back. We have overlap. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of the terms are just lambda. They're some, very some boring. Lambda terms, very some, boring. Some variable and some body, that's right. So if we want to skew it a little bit. Coins. We can put in, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can put in a 20 and see if this works any better. Whoops. Now it takes a little longer. Uh, but now you can see that our terms are much more complicated. So for example, uh, that one has lots of applications in it. So by, uh, our hope is by using this technology um, you can easily create fuzzers, and if you want to create some gigantic terms, you know, without having to enumerate all of the smaller terms first, you can easily do that, run it through the rest of your system. So uh, this is hopefully an example of how the purity is remaining pure. Like a lot of people will ask, well, with logic programming, that's great, but what does running backwards give you? Well, it gives you lots of flexibility. If you're going ahead and specifying the type system, you may as well use that to be able to generate terms of arbitrary complexity that are well typed that you can then send through your system to, to stress test. And you'll also have the, uh, well, it's quine time. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's learn a little bit about quines. <laughs> okay, so um, you have the code up there yet? No. Okay. So the only difference between uh, these two systems is we've added two um, new, two expression types. And we got, rid of the, we got rid of the number set, the problem yeah, yeah. set for this one. Um, yeah. Oh, that'd be interesting. It might be, but not today. <laughs> so, um, 
We have added two new expression types to our language. You're both, I'm sure you're familiar with both of them. One is called quote, and one is called list. And the only thing that's sort of interesting about quote is it says no quote closure in there because it turns out that you can generate expressions with the word quote. So if you, because it doesn't know that you're going in or out. It doesn't have any idea what you're doing. The thing just works on its own. So the issue here is we have to have that no o quote closure to just allow us to have some tag that we're in charge of. And that's the tag we've chosen. OK, now, um, the others are just kind of obvious. Uh, and certain, you know, not trivially obvious, but <laughs> obvious given the time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this not, a, not, an envo is, not an envo is kind of neat because it allows you to have things like lambda, lambda, lambda as an expression in a language. The first lambda says, I'm a lambda. The second lambda is just another name for a very nice variable. And the other one is uh, that same variable. So you get the identity function, for example, if you do lambda, lambda, lambda. And you can play all sorts of crazy games like that. Now, how do we know this is uh, necessary? Because it was generating a lot of gibberish. And we could deal, you know, we didn't know what to do. So we had to add this thing called not an envo that says, I am not in the lexical scope at this point in time. Remember, when you're running things backwards, you get a little dizzy. OK, it is, it, it's, it's quite tricky stuff. OK, um, Will, do you want to add anything about this? Uh, yeah, so when we demoed uh, Mini Canron last year at the unconference thing, the unconj thing, uh, Stu Holloway, who may be here somewhere, asked. He is. <laughs> okay, he asked if our system, because we can run our interpreter backwards just like we can run type construct backwards, he, won he wondered if uh, we could generate quines. And a quine is a program that when you evaluate it, it evaluates to itself. And I thought that was a good, good problem, and so did Dan. So I went off to the hotel room and <laughs> clop, 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 and I got like a, a working version that night that kind of worked, but not really, and I showed it the next day. But then we spent basically the last year, I, I guess it, almost exactly a year, yeah, yeah, almost trying to come year. up with a better version. <laughs> and, and Eric and, Holk helped us a lot. And, and really, the, uh, that problem was responsible for the addition of symbolo and number O. No O. And no O. That was a great problem. You know? So let's move on to an okay. example. Could we do that? Yeah. OK. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Okay. Just remove it. Just quote it out or something. Oh, yeah. You know what a thrine is, by the way? It's up there. It uh, says. No, 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 don't uh, tell them. Oh, well, well, okay. Come on. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Ready? Mm hmm. Okay. So let's do. Okay. So the question is we've got this eval expo thing which takes an expression, an environment, and then you get some output answer like that, okay? And the question is, how can we use this program to generate a program that evaluates to itself? So, so what can I write here for X? Well, for environment, we want it to evaluate in the empty environment, so we don't care about, we don't want any variable bindings in place, but what expression can we have and what output can we have to make sure that we're going to generate a program that evaluates to itself? Any ideas? QQ, okay, that sounds good. Okay, so we want the same expression as the input and the output. Okay, <laughs> there it is. Believe it or not, there it is. I don't believe it, Dan. How can we find out? I don't know. Let's see. Um, what if we evaluated that and saw okay. if so it here, was the here same is, thing? Here is the program that I just grabbed from that. Okay. I'm going to call it Q. I have to quote it so it doesn't evaluate prematurely. Okay, so this is our Q program. Actually, you don't. I know you don't, no, but I'm just trying that's to. That's a little in, in joke. I know. Just don't Dan have doesn't to. like me using eval, but I'm going to do it. Right. Okay. I don't even see what's on the blackboard. Whatever. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Great. You evaluate this expression. What do we get back? Oh, that looks familiar. All right. Now let me prove it. 
Ooh. OK. I mean, that's so a that's, pretty, a, that's a pretty good proof. <laughs> Can you generate more than one? I don't know. Can Let's we? see. <laughs> How about two? How about 12? <laughs> 12? Uh, All right, three. <laughs> How about five? There oh, we go. all right, not too bad. Right. Anyway, these are all legitimate quines. It couldn't possibly be anything else, in fact. <laughs> Considering the shortness of that program, it's like almost frightening. Um, okay, but what is a, what's a thrine? Well, how about a twine first? Oh, right, what's a twine? I bet by induction you could figure out how to do thrines. <laughs> or quadrines. <laughs> or quintines, you know, little induction, you'll be all set. What is a twine, Dan? Oh, you have to ask me that again. I always, okay. I always get confused. A twine, twines are when you have two programs, P and Q, where P and Q are different, and where P evaluates the Q and Q evaluates the P. Do you think we can uh, generate those? All right, well, how would we do that? I would be, am I supposed to? <laughs> hmm? You left out right. part of the description. <laughs> Right. What? Well, that they're not, not the same? I said that. Oh, yeah. you did. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So let's say our output is, uh, our query variable is going to be R, and we have P and Q as programs. So how do we write this program? So P how many calls to evaluate? P, P evaluates to Q. Q. Okay. And then Q evaluates to P. And since Will said they have to be different, let's make them different. And let's watch it run. Oh, oh I forgot. What happened? Uh, slight fail. Hold on. Did we leave something out? No. Oh, whoops. Hold on. You want to make them laugh? Yeah, I forgot, I forgot. You forgot like Will Bird's it. law. No, no. That, didn't, that, that no. law is fine. Oh, you didn't show anything. I forgot oh, to actually you like. You forgot to give a value for them. Yeah. All right. It actually, it actually generated a coin, but it wasn't yeah, going to show you. It wasn't. It was a very interesting one. <laughs> there, yeah, we, there it is. There okay. We, okay, so we have two programs here. All right. Okay, so you got that expression and that expression. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's define Q, or no, P. You have to go all to be the, the way. First one. You have to, okay, you have to quote it. So I'm going to grab this whole thing. It has a quote. Well, no, 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 no. No what? It's, I don't think that's it. That's it. I've done this before. All right. <laughs> All right, that's P, and then... I trust him. <laughs> Q. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so let's see here. We got P, and we have Q. All right, let's see if this works. So, should be able to eval P. That should be equal, yeah, equal to Q, right? Mm -hmm. Should we go for broke here? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I'm getting nerd chills. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. There you go. Uh. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay, so you, you get the story, and by induction, you can play to your heart's content. And as always, all of the code and the description and maybe the improvement in fix will be available on Will's GitHub, and you can all play with it and have some fun with it. Yeah, the quines are on GitHub, and we're also going to put up, a, well, con. The con P will also be and there. And we'll fix that but bug in the uh, type inverser that we found by I fuzzing. don't believe the syntax case will survive. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so. Okay. That's please, it. Yes, that's it. And uh, please make your programs be pure and run them backwards and be awesome. <laughs>